Hey everyone, my name is Alex Pepper, and this is the Career Conversations podcast brought to you by the Career and Professional Development Center at California University of Pennsylvania. If you want to check us out in our services, follow us at CalU Careers on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, or visit our website at www.calu.edu slash inside slash career dash center. Today, I'm talking to Jeff Nobili. He's an application support coordinator at Quest Tech. If you don't know what that is, that's totally fine. Neither did I, but Jeff was kind enough to tell me. I'm excited for you to hear about Jeff's journey and our discussion about humanity and technology and how those two things might work together. Hey, Jeff, thanks for uh, sitting down with me. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about what your job is and a description of that job. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me today. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Nobili. I am an application support coordinator uh, for a company called Quest Tech, and my placement is at South Allegheny School District in McKeesport, PA, and I basically help uh, transition, help with the transition of the school uh, from just some computers in the classroom to a complete one computer to one student atmosphere, uh, and this is uh, my second year there. Okay, great. And that, I mean, that's super interesting. You said a lot of technical words, so you might have to, you might have to explain sure, some of them sure, for sure. me. Sure, sure. Application, what, what it is, is now that uh, so much learning is online and for technology, uh, the application support coordinator, my role is to help the teachers make that transition from teaching in front of the students to a tech, using tech in their classroom. We've had a lot of help from the federal and state government with some equipment and we've upgraded and now we have Chromebooks and iPads for every student. And uh, we're, we're, we're t helping those teachers make that leap into the technical world. And we want them to go even further. Our long-term goal is to have them not just digitally handing out uh, worksheets, but you know, seeing how things can be interactive, see how kids can get more involved. There's, there's a lot of uh, studies on it. There's a lot of theories, but that's basically what we want to do. We've we've come a long way in the first year through COVID, and what we want to do is make that extra step. Our our assistant superintendent always says, "Last year we survived. Now it's time to thrive." I like that. I really like that a lot. And you just gave me a lot of questions because I mean, now is a time where I imagine that business is kind of booming, and it's um it's a popular industry. And I'm curious if that that realization played a role in, you said you just, uh, you transitioned into that career pretty recently. And yes. I wondered if that boom influenced that transition at all. It influenced it in one respect that it, it allowed me to combine my past uh, job history, which I know we're going to get into and the things that I did for my whole career with my love of tech and my study of tech. And it allows me to do both at once. So, but you are right in that it is a, it is a, uh, field that is growing technology in schools. Uh, the schools need a lot of help. A lot of them have great, great internal IT departments, but Quest Tech has built a reputation as someone that can come in and turn it around quickly. Uh, when I was hired, I was told that we're going to take a five-year plan and do it in five months, and everyone kind of laughed thinking that it was a joke, but that's actually what happened. We did that, and Quest Tech actually grew over the pandemic and our retention rate with schools is over 99% and uh, no one missed a day of work during the pandemic. We were very busy. So you, you did the segue for me, but can you, you know, tell us how you got to this position starting from, you know, going to college, selecting your major and going through the whole journey up until this moment? I know it's a little hard, but if you could kind of break it down into phases. Yeah, sure, yeah, I could give it to uh, as the, in the elevator speech, as they say. Uh, I graduated high school in, uh, I guess, the now would be considered the black and white days of 1993. I went to the University of Pittsburgh and I, and I majored in social work. I got a BASW from the University of Pittsburgh and I got a job uh, in Washington, PA, working for a company, a job training agency that worked in Washington and Green and Beaver counties. And I worked my way up through that company, uh, doing IT, doing different things, working in fiscal to the point where I was uh, working in administration and behind the scenes a lot. And then when uh, my wife got a job at Cal U, I took advantage of the spouse uh, availability of 
going back to school. And although I had a bachelor's degree, uh, as a spouse, I qualified for another bachelor's degree. So I went to an evening college program, which I don't even think exists at Cal U anymore. But uh, mm -hmm. I spent four years doing, uh, working full time and then going to school, what they would say would be part time, but it felt like full time. And uh, I got a second degree in IT focused on computer information systems. And uh, I, I spent a year working on and networking and leadership at uh, Highmark, at uh, Highmark Health, HMHS is the company that it is. When my wife and I found out that we were having a baby, I actually went back uh, to, to I, I got hired back at my old position, which uh, was great because it was that company was growing and it offered a little bit more of a work life balance at a time when a new baby was coming along. Uh, no on calls and things like that, that the IT field goes to. So I spent another four years back at that company. And then when I started to look for something else, I really wanted to go to something that was full IT again. I really felt like I could do well with uh, my degree and help a company out. And my life was always communication. It was written communication, writing grants, uh, developing planning, networking, things like that. That's what I grew up in this nonprofit world. When Quest Tech job came along and the opportunity to work as an application support coordinator where I could go out and work with people, work with teachers, work with students, work with families, work with administrations, use my skills that I had as a networker, as a planner, as a writer, plus throw in my love of tech and IT and use that sense of it, it really was the best of both worlds. And uh, like I said, I just feel very fortunate that Quest Tech took a chance on me uh, and put me on a team. I work on a great team with three other guys, and uh, we it's, it's really worked out well. Uh, my first anniversary for the company was July 13th, and I look for much more. Congratulations on that anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know that might have been around the way a little bit, but I just wanted to show the full uh, transition. I actually started at Pitt majoring in, uh, I wanted to be a physical therapist, but uh, as an 18 year old uh, with a 2.4 grade point average, it was not the uh, physical therapy seemed like a long way off. So I re rethought my skills of what I could do and social work is where I ended up at and that working with people is what I wanted to do. But then I went back to tech and really uh, combined the two of them. And that's, that's something we're seeing a lot when people are choosing careers is trying to find uh, the right combination for you. Like it, from what I'm hearing from you, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, even when you, uh, it, it sounds like you always want to be some in helping people, whether it was social work or your previous decision in your major. And then that's kind of now you're helping schools get interactive so that you can improve the experience of both the teachers and the students in their um, online teaching. Yes. And that's, that's basically what it is. I, I've always liked, to share my love of, you know, whatever hobbies I have, tech, uh, the arts, the th uh, music, anything like that. It, it, it's always nice to share it with people, but when you could share tech in a world right now where kids need, especially in a district like South Allegheny, where they want to do so much and they uh, put a lot of money and effort behind it to get the teachers the tools they need, uh, helping that transition along is really great. And now my boss and I, our team always tells our teachers that we work with that honestly even though we're tech people tech is not always the answer teaching is the forefront teaching is what's important and we need to, we we tell them all the time that we want them to always rely on teaching tech is a tool and uh my job is to tell them how to incorporate that tool just like anything else into their classroom and from what I'm hearing, it's and it's and something I would assume. I don't know much about the tech industry, but the true successful tech companies or anybody who works in the technology industry, it's how do you bring the humanity to technology? Does that sound correct? That is exactly right. Uh, the humanity is so important. I find that humanity is so important in all fields. Everything that we've done, um, I try to be empathetic. I try to put myself in other people's shoes. You know, you. Uh, you have someone that's been teaching for 20 years, 25 years, and they're comfortable in what they do. And now you're saying, hey, look, you could do it like this. And I always promise the teachers that I work with that I will never walk into a room and say, you need to teach like this, because I'm not a teacher. 
I'm not a trained teacher. That's their profession. Educators are educators. I'm the technology person that's going to come in and help them along the way. So I think, uh, I think you're right. I think you, the humanity is so important that you need to step back and say, this is a great tool that you can learn how to use. It's going to take time. You know, it's the same thing we tell our kids. But, but you know how it is these days, young people, they pick up their devices and they know how to use it. The teachers laugh that the kids uh, know how to work things so fast. I was in a fourth grade, fifth grade classroom last year uh, and my boss and I were working on something for them and the kids started shouting out IP addresses that they were sharing on. The, and it was just so exciting because they get excited for that. And uh, whether they know it or not, they're learning a lot that's going to get them ready for uh things in the future the technology is not going to die uh, but the bad thing is that you know they'll be like me and you'll have to help your parents set up your the whole network sometimes and that's that's not always easy either <laughs> that's true that's true and you mentioned that you changed majors at uh university of pittsburgh and i'm curious when or if you knew if you've ever found out like this is where i belong this is the career um you know when that moment was Sure. The, uh, the, the, the interesting thing at Pitt was it was always physical therapy was always such a competitive thing. And the first thing I did was I, I tried full bull to go into it. I volunteered at Montefiore Hospital. I did things. I really tried to learn about it. Um, I don't know if being 18 years old, I wasn't ready to be there yet. I don't, I don't know what it was, but it just didn't feel right for me. Uh, I got a job that summer of my freshman year at Pitt working with a company in Washington, PA, the one that eventually hired me. And uh, I was a manager of kids that work on the kitchen street crews and, uh, you know, timesheets, budgeting, trying to help them out. Just, and I really liked that. I liked giving back to the community and helping out. And I thought, you know what, this is great. This is a way to go. And I was lucky enough. I mean, I got offered my full-time job midway through my senior year of college that that's a good way to leave college is having a job i remember I, I if i remember the dates right i graduated from Pitt april 26 97 and i started my first full-time job may 12th you know and since then i've been working ever since but that's just a decision that you had to have faith in yourself and take a leap because i mean anyone listening to this or have heard me tell this story before the pay starting pay for a social worker in the late nineties compared to a physical therapist in the late nineties, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's less than half of what physical therapy would make. So you're, you're going in and you're, you have faith in yourself that you're going to do. Okay. Now I always love the tech end of it. I got involved with it as much as I can. And as much as I learned and did on the job at my work, I had nothing to back it up. So when the opportunity came back to go back to school at Cal U, I jumped at it and I knew it was going to be hard. And it was, it was, it was very hard at the time. It was just my wife and me and we didn't have any children yet at the time. And it was, it was just, you know, every weekend, most nights you're just doing work and it's, you're putting into it, but you love it. And, uh, it, it wouldn't have happened without some of the great professors at Cal that took me and said, you know, I had a teacher, one of the classes at Cal U, the senior project class was offered during the day, the year I was a senior. And a teacher came to me, Dr. Boff, Gina Boff, and said, are you taking senior project? And I said, I can't. I work full time. I can't. She actually changed the schedule around so that I could fit it into the class. And uh, there were some uh, some college kids that were like, oh, now we're going to take a night class. But, uh, you know, that doesn't happen that often. I didn't ask for it, but it happened. And uh, you, you appreciate things like that and you give back and uh, it, 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 you learn that through your network, your professional network, your personal network, those are the things you lean on that really get you further. And I think you're right, Alex. I think that the, like you said, humanity, that's just where it all comes to. And in no matter what field you're in, manufacturing, medical, obviously, uh, education, obviously, uh, tech, you need to have that humanity. The days of the, now believe me, they're still there. There's still the tech worker that sits in the dark and does all his programming and does, and we need those people. Those are the smartest people in the room. We need those guys and those girls to do that. And especially girls, we need young ladies to get into that and, and program. But, you know, being able to go out and talk to people and work with people and empathize and, and uh, show where you're coming from, that's, that's, it's the key to every job. 
I completely agree, especially about the the ladies. I think we're gonna get more STEM uh, women in STEM coming up. And, I love it. I love this. I, I love when it happens, and I push for it as much as I possible. I I have a five year old that I'm already beating in her head. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, we will. I'm curious. You mentioned your time at Cal. Was there something that you learned? at your time at Cal or even University of Pittsburgh, something a professor taught you, a piece of knowledge that you gained that you still think about to this day. And I'll give you an example. I went to film school at NYU and something that stayed with me and it was a professor just, you know, offhand said it was a producing class and getting financing for a movie. And he said, never spend your own money. Hmm. And every time I, I worked in New York City in the industry for nine years, Every time I was trying to develop something and get it off the ground, inevitably one person on the team would always say, we should, maybe we should just, you know, we should use our own money and then, and then just to get it started. And that voice in my head every single time was never use your own money. And it's interesting how many peers I've heard say they use their own money and they lost it. Um, and so I'm curious for you, if there's a piece of knowledge like that, that stuck with you. I tell you one thing, it wasn't, and not, not that I did, not that I didn't hold on from lessons from Cal U, but my first supervisor at Highmark, uh, Elena was her name, and uh, she was, she was a tough boss, she was, a t- I, I was there for three weeks with her, and she said to me, you're on call this weekend, and I was, what do you mean I'm on call, I don't even know how to sign in for the system, but that's how she was, it was, uh, it was, she was a great boss, but she told me one day, write like you're paying for every word. Wow. And uh, when she told me that, I wrote it down on a post-it note, and I still have the post-it note that I wrote it down on because it helped me with communicating emails to try not to get too wordy. When I went back to my other job and I was writing grants, you know, you you, you don't know who's going to read your grant that you're writing, but you want to throw as much into it as you can. But she would tell me, write like you're paying for every word. And that kind of stuck with me because if you don't do that, if you think like that, you know where to put the brakes on. I can get wordy when I talk. I can get wordy when I write. I, I can get wordy, but I, that sticks with me, right? Like you're paying for every word. I thought that was good. I love that. I think that's really wise and that can be applicable to uh, careers and also life. So we're coming to the end of our time. I want to go through kind of a couple rapid answers. So if you could just answer the question, try your best. Some of these might be hard to do in three to five sentences. We'll see. We'll see what we can come up with. Um, my first one is what's the worst part of your job right now? Uh, the worst part of our job right now is just time. Uh, since the first week start, we work on a ticketing system where people put in help desk tickets. We've had over 700 tickets come in in three weeks and uh, we've closed over 600 of them. But just trying to get to everybody. It's just time. It's just time. And sometimes it's time putting into finding the resolution. It's tough. Right. Okay. What do you know now that you wish you had known back in college? <laughs> Which college? <laughs> I know now the tech is for me. I wish I would have known that back at Pitt. I would have been 20 years. I'd be 20 years into the, into the tech field right now instead of, instead of uh, three. But uh, I w- yeah, I wish I would have gone for it back then. Great. And last but not least, what is your definition of success? Uh, definition of success is happiness and being able to have people to spend it with. Um, I, get, I get joked around in my life with my family. I'm not the most positive person in our group. And uh, but if I could look at something, I, I'm truly happy at my job right now. I, I like helping people and having my wife and my daughter to spend that time with and my coworkers. It's truly a team. It's truly a family. It's a little family. And uh, the the company I work for now is run by a family like a family. And I think that uh, I think that's important. So I think it's identifying success, knowing what they are and getting that happiness and being able to share it with others. Success on your own is great. You know, you we all have personal successes, but you get that team and everyone can. Well, not these days. We're not doing too many high fives these days, but uh, mm-hmm. We could, uh, when you could sell, yes, that's right. When you could look at it and say, hey, we did that. We did that. And that's what I'm bringing to South Allegheny. That's what I'm bringing to Quest Tech. I'm trying to bring that team atmosphere, partnership. We're going to get there. I love that. 
Well, thank you so much for taking this time to talk with me. It was really interesting. I learned a lot. And well, I, thanks, Alex. I think this is a great idea. And Cal U is, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I graduated from Pitt, but uh, Cal U is very close to my heart. It, it's great. It set me on my new path here. I, I'm still in contact with a lot of the professors I had. My wife works there in the, the Career and Professional Development Center. I think that they are top notch. You know, anything I could do for Cal U or your office or this podcast, I'd love to help out. We all appreciate it so much. Um, thanks again. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.